My name is Hans Durishin. Some of you may recognize me as the founder of RSF Energy in the Smithers. RSF Energy began in 1978 manufacturing wood-fired stoves, furnaces, and fireplaces. For 20 years, we sold about 50,000 units all over North America and in places like Norway and Switzerland. RSF Energy products are now being manufactured in Eastern Canada. However, I'm still very interested in getting people away from fossil fuels, so I got involved in the next generation of biomass heating. Although the fire you see here is a great way to live through the cold winters up here in northern British Columbia, chimneys do smoke sometimes. And as your kids leave home, gathering and stacking firewood takes more and more effort. And the stove must be fed often, not to mention frequent chimney cleaning. So, eight years ago, I got involved in the design of a heating system that would burn virtually any kind of wood waste and produce no smoke, no sparks, no creosote, and do that so automatically that you'd think you're on natural gas. Just imagine going away for a week and coming back to a warm home and being independent from big gas or big oil. And then, when they raise the fossil fuel prices, it won't bother you. Let me now introduce you to the next generation of wood heat. This system will keep you warm 12 months of a year and even heat your domestic water at no extra cost. All you need to do is fill your fuel storage room with chips, sawdust or pellets, and relax. Let the LEI BioBurner do the rest. I've used the BioBurner for the past two years. Let me show you. So here we are, just behind the house. Uh, you can see the boiler room. Uh, where the burner is uh, housed inside and also the fuel beside it. So I'll just go over and uh, we'll go right in. Well, here's the view of actually the back side of the burner. And you can see where the fuel comes in and some of the control mechanisms. And the silver at the bottom are the pipes that then go to the house. Now here we have a close-up of the control panel or touch screen. Here we can do a new number of things and also see the thing operate. First of all, we can start and stop it. And then we can look at operating temperatures combustion, stack, and the water temperature. And we can zero in and fine tune <coughs> the air and fuel rate, and so forth. Uh, we're now looking at the end of the unit, which has the, the computer, and you can look at it by opening the panel. And up here is your main board with the computer and the back of the touch screen. And below that is a gas burner that starts the unit so that um, we don't see smoke even at the beginning. Once the combustion chamber is hot enough, the gas stops and it feeds normal biomass fuel. Here we have a view of the auger feeding the burner and we'll take a peek at what it looks like operating. It's just a screw that feeds the uh, burner at just exactly the right rate to uh, burn clean. Here's a close-up view of the fuel storage and you can see a hub slowly turning with springs that scrape the fuel and actually push it over top of the uh, the auger that then augers the fuel into the unit. 
uh, as you can see, chips don't flow very well. They stick together and have to be actually physically fed into the uh, auger. Uh, and this is done all automatically. You don't have to be here when that happens. One unique feature of this system is that you can clean the tubes on the run. Any biomass burner puts out some fly ash which then gets stuck on the tubes. And here on the run, we can periodically, once every couple of weeks, just take a drill and clean them. There's a screw that goes all the way down the tubes. When you turn it, it cleans them up again. This now is a view of the ash system, or at least the pail that collects the ash. Uh, you can have a look. Um, once every couple of months, you'll have to empty this pail. Otherwise, it removes the ash automatically. Uh, for those of you who have access to logs or brush, a chipper may be an answer for you. What I have here is a very low price chipper that will chip up to about 8 inch diameter logs. It works well for me and this way you chip directly into your chip storage and you do not have to handle the chips themselves.